Every school in Britain has a story to tell, but in this documentary, we are going to uncover the secret life of just one, a very special school here in Liverpool, a city whose factories, docks and musical history made Liverpool a global power and linked to the rest of the world. Delving into the archives, we will uncover the history and stories of a school that for the last 50 years crisscrossed the city. Parents, into battle for better school. We look back at what happened to the caretaker who turned criminal. The very first Palmerston School was located on St. Mary's Road in Garston. 30,000 pounds of damages. Visit from Abbey I go past it on my way to work every day and I always have a little smile. This is the ultimate detective hunt, covering the lives of the thousands of pupils who have walked through the many doors of Palmerston School since 1971. Today, Palmerston School is located in Egbert, a leafy suburb in Liverpool, just a five minute stroll from the famous waterfront. The current head teacher, Miss Alison Wheeler, is helping us with our quest to find the history of our school. Do you know any history about Palmerston School? Um, I only know from Beaconsfield, which is where the school was before it moved here, because um, that's when I started. Where did you join our school? When did I join our school? I joined as head teacher, uh, as deputy head teacher in yeah. 2008. Yeah. You were the head teacher at the time. He was the head teacher at the time. It was Liz Burbage. Oh. Um, and I knew Liz because when I worked at a school in Warrington, Liz was the head teacher there. And then when the job came up for the deputy head teacher here, um, I got in contact with Liz and said, I think this is a job that I would love to do because I've heard such good things about Palmerston School. When did you become head and why? Ooh, I became head teacher in September 2017. And why? Um, why not? Because it's such an amazing school. So I was head, uh, deputy head teacher first, so I knew all the pupils, I knew all the staff, I knew all our families, all the, and it was all the teachers, I knew everybody, Luke, and I just thought, this is an amazing school and I would love to be head teacher. When did you move to the new school? When did we move to the new school? That was in, it was Easter, so it was April time, and that was in 2017. Um, it was just a, a really exciting but really difficult time because we had to empty all the cupboards from the old school and move everything into the new school. And that was when I discovered all of these old photographs in a cupboard. And I just thought, oh, what is all this rubbish? And I was gonna throw them all away. And then when I looked at them, I thought, wow, these look really, really interesting. I'm going to keep these. Um, so you need to speak to Sue Bowden about a little bit more about the move. We moved in here in April 2017. That's when we came to Egbeth. I think they started building it about 18 months beforehand. And so me and Alison and Liz used to work with the guys who were designing the building telling them all the things that we wanted this building to have. But the only way we knew what we wanted this building to have was because we'd asked all of the pupils and the staff how did they want this building to be different. Um, so we were asked to have a football pitch, so we've got a big field outside, um, and the pool, and the 16 plus common room, and things like that. So we were able to design it so that up in 16 plus, it felt a little bit more grown up with the, the green on the wall so that it wasn't Liverpool or Everton colours. Uh, I remember being asked for that. Then when they started the building, the building team would come into the old Palmerston and do um, little visits with the classes and showing the classes about the health and safety equipment that they wore, the hats, the hard hats and the heavy shoes and the high-vis jackets. 
and about keeping safe on a building site and some of the pupils were able to come down and watch while they were building and then once the building got so that it was a bit more of a shell we were able to come and visit inside as well and have a look round and get used to it. It took us a long time to design it and get it built but then I think since we've moved in, touch wood, touch wood, everything's been okay. Our journey started with the discovery of the old photographs that were found filed away in a box in our school. Wow, wow, let's let's look at these guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alison, our head teacher, told us they were from our old school on Beaconsfield Road. But upon closer inspection, we realised they were a lot older. Oh, Exmouth, Exmouth, 1953, this must be from Christmas. To assist our investigation, we subscribed to the British newspaper archive where we uncovered the birthplace of Palmerston School. Look at that. Oh damn, they look the same. What they do? That does. Must be from the same... the same time. The t same area? Yeah, same area. I've got that too. H Church, Eight Church Road, Liverpool, L19. <gasps> That's costly. <laughs> Shall we start our search there then, guys? Come on, let, let's do it. The address that was on the back of the photographs was the photography studio of El McCormick. Using the power of social media, it was confirmed by residents of Garston that Palmerston School was situated on St Mary's Road, Garston in the 1970. So we searched the newspaper and archives and discovered this article. In April 1971, Liverpool Education Authority takes over responsibility for the education of mentally handicapped children. The Education Committee will be asked to establish five new special schools, premises which are at present called Junior Training Centres. They are Prince's Road, Prince's School, Prince's Road, Palmerston School, Garston, Stonefield School, Stonefield Road, Longmore, not Longmore School, New Hall, and Olive Mount Hospital School. We followed the clues found in the photographs which led us to Garston Occupational Centre, which was based at 93A St Mary's Road, Garston in the 1950s. We open the gates and take a step back in time walking over the footsteps of Palmerston students that have gone before us. The pool lighting is long gone with traces of it can be found in the bricked up doorways and windows. We can only imagine what school life would have been like within the walls. We are now going to follow our clues to the second Palmerston location. During our research, we found this article. Detectives from E Division Station and Merseys Merseyside Police Station at Admiral Street, Liverpool, have been busy raising money to help children at one of the city's special schools. They did this through a proceed of a football match by selling an autographed football. The school in choice is Palmerston School, a special school in Brentford Road, Belvale. We used our virtuality headsets to find the site of the second Palmerston School in Belleville, which is just a few, mile, a few miles across from the city from Garston. Come with me and I'll show you. The school was designed by Sir Norman Foster and it was cutting edge for, the, for this time. Whilst looking on his website, we uncovered the following interview with his colleague Spencer D. Gray. It was quite an unusual building type um, and I don't think anybody quite knew how uh, children would respond to the building and, 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 and so one tried to keep it quite quite loose. But that was experimenting very much not only with sort of the loose, the loose fit, the loose space, but also with the ex uh, expression of the services um, and the, uh, the uh, ventilation system, the ducts, were expressed at the apex of each of the five bays. And the use of colour, it's one of the most colourful buildings the office has ever done. 
Sir Norman Foster went on to become a world famous architect who has a portfolio containing buildings such as the Gherkin in London, HSBC in Hong Kong, Hearst Tower in New York and the new Wembley Stadium in London just to name a few. Unfortunately when we arrived at the location of the building it had been demolished and replaced with a housing estate. The school stood here from 1976 to 1986. In 1986, the school went. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. In 1986, the school in Belvaire was judged to be uns unsuitable for pupils because of the high temperatures caused by the glass and metal structure, as well as the presence of, of as asbestos, which was used in buildings at the time. So we were on the move again to a third site, but parents, pupils, and staff found themselves embroiled on a scandal, the battle for Home Rook. Here on Beaconsfield Road in Walton, in the famous strawberry fields here, here, stands out of our third Palmerston School. It was originally called Home Rook School for partially sighted children, during our research, this is what we discovered. It says on this that Harlem Rook was built in the 1950s. Oh, wasn't that in West <laughs> Derby? Yeah, I tried, but it was uh, 30,000 pounds of damages. There, there was a fire in Home, in home Rook. And what happened to the kids? And um, They were left stranded <gasps> no way with nowhere to go. <gasps> oh no! Oh my god. <laughs> John Lennon uh, visited in <laughs> 1969. <laughs> Wow, I bet the staff were excited to meet, to meet the Beatle. I found a sad story. In 1971, a caretaker from Homework was found guilty for stealing a camera, a projector, and a radio from the school. Oh my, oh god. my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's awful. Over. Homework stayed on Beaconsfield for another 15 years until they closed their door for the lockdown. Oh. Oh. In 1986, Palmerston School in Belvale shut down and a new site was needed. They were promised to the site of Homework on Bakersfield Road, however there was a problem. Liverpool City Council had other ideas and was plotting to sell the land to private developers for housing. Oof. We found the story in the archives of a top secret operation to take place during the night to empty the, co the contents of Homework's school which would prevent Palmerston from moving in. Oh but my god. god! But the council weren't prepared for the furious response from our children's families. They threatened to take the council to court, and together with an angry picket by union members, the council were forced to withdraw their plans for the Lucas of Sale. Hey. Palmerston students, parents and staff stuck victorious in the battle for home rook. Hey. Hey. Our third site was right next to the beautiful Coldest Zones Park. In 1999, the school needed refurbishing, so we had to move again. We interviewed one of our long-serving staff about this time. I've been in Palmerston for 26 years. I started off as a passenger assistant. In 1999, we moved to a place called Lee Manor in Netherly because the old Palmerston was getting remodernised. Well, when we moved, we were in the Earl Palmerston, we had to move to Lee Manor and then back to the Earl Palmerston and then back here. So I've, I've done so many changes. In the old school, we were quite lucky because we were by Calderstones Park and up the top of the road, we had Reynolds Park and we could walk to the little Tesco's in Walton, which we found we were very, very lucky. Everyone was really happy to be going back to our wooded home. Yay! In 2013, our pupils' numbers were rising, so an extension was needed. We, we needed an annex which was added in the post-16 common room with up-to-date technology for our learning. 
Over the next few years, it became clear, although we were very happy in Walton, it was becoming old, and it didn't provide us with any space that we needed. I like the old school because of the memories. So it was where I first started at Palmerston. Um, I like the old school because of it was just opposite the park and we used to have lots of trips out at Calderstones Park virtually every day in the summer. We used to go out all the time. Um, I like the old building because there was lots of little corridors off and you could hide in places and some of the children would hide and sneak around. But I have to say the new building is better because we've got lots of specialist rooms that we didn't have in the old building. In the old building when I first started we had, um, we had lots of specialist rooms but then because the children, the numbers were getting bigger and bigger we had to use all those specialist rooms for classrooms so we didn't really have a nice food technology room that we've got now, we didn't have a salon, um, we didn't have a rebound room. The outside area wasn't as big as our playground now, so I think I probably prefer this new building because of the space that we've got and all the nice rooms and everything that we've got to. And we've got the train station just up the road as well, which means that all the students can use it for travel training and things like that. So probably prefer this one. Although I've got lots of nice memories in the old building as well. So in 2015, a new beginning and a fourth Palmerston was being planned. In April 2017, after 31 years in Walton, the big move was upon us, and Egbeth, our current home, was our destination. Here on the right brick site, there has been four other schools since the 1970s. They were at our school school, Bank View, Mersey View, and before us, a brick high. Egbeth has been our home for five years now, and we are all very happy. We are enjoying all the fantastic facilities on offer, both inside and out, as well as the beautiful environment outside our school gates. We have asked everybody in school to make us something to put into our time capsule, so our future pupils and staff can take a glimpse into Palmerston's past. This has been a voyage of discovery, and we have celebrated this, created this time capsule to celebrate the last 50 years of Palmerston School. Although we are only one year late, due to COVID. It is filled with special memories and is not to be dug up until 2071. Unless we moved before then. It's always really good looking at the past and looking to see what has happened and to change things that maybe need to change. So our old Palmerston was brilliant, but we needed to change things. And this new Palmerston now is probably the best school ever. We're always, always changing. We're always adapting and making sure that the pupils have got the best they can ever have. So while I'm saying this is the best now, it might not be the best in five years' time. So we need to just to keep make sure that we're changing things all the time and keeping up to date with everything. We are the class of 2022. Getting ready for our next move to the big wide world. Leaving Palmerston School to our present and future pupils to make another 50 years of wonderful memories.